Christensen has started 33 companies as an entrepreneur. Some of them have failed and some of them have succeeded wildly. And from all of these experiences, he's designed the zigzag principle. Okay, thanks for being here today, Rich. You've founded 33 companies and that's led you to writing a couple of books, one being Bootstrap Business and one being the zigzag principle. How did all of these businesses lead you to becoming an author? You know, I, I never really claimed or had any desires or ambitions to be an author, but the reality is, is there was just messaging that had to take place. Uh, I've seen so much crazy failure out there and stupid brain dead kind of things taking place that, uh, that just felt really compelled that needed to get the blending of the ingredients proper. You know, uh, I recall sitting on a book some years back and I, I read them. I've read all the entrepreneurship books and I was reading one. I got so frustrated. I forgot where it was at. I threw the book across the airplane, hit some poor little old lady in the head. And at that point, I realized that, uh, that I need to get my slant on it. Uh, and, and I think a little purer. I think that there's two parts to, to the equation. There's the heart and the head, and you have to blend both and actually to, uh, to actually be a successful entrepreneur. Yes, I've read a lot that passion can drive an entrepreneur, but it's not the only thing that should drive you. Yeah, I think that that's a really a fair statement. And most of the entrepreneur books out there, from my experience, either get crazy, crazy theoretical, and they start talking about how to build pro forma models and how to how to build you know balance your sheet and how to write a business plan, and they get all pragmatic. And everyone's falling asleep, and it's not really practical. Or the other side of the equation is: is let's all hold hands, uh, sing kumbaya, and uh, think our way into success. And that doesn't work either. It really requires the heart and the head and blending appropriately. And I think that that's what we've really successfully done with with both bootstrap and most specifically zigzag principle. The thing that I'm really proud about. Is, is we didn't just talk about it. We just didn't theoretically throw it out there. We actually did it. We ate our own cooking. We drank our own Kool-Aid. And, and we got wood behind our arrow. We've actually done it while we wrote the book uh, to validate the concepts. So simplest question, what is the zigzag principle? So, you know, in life, uh, in life, we live in zigzag all the time, yet in, in the business world so frequently, we're taught to, to set a crazy big hairy goal, race directly towards it, and then we wonder why we have so many uh, business failures. You know, nine out of ten small businesses fail. I don't know about you, but nine out of ten, that doesn't sound like a really great uh, uh, level of odds to me. So what the zigzag principle is, is, is to live our, create our businesses exactly like we live our lives. When you're skiing, you don't take your tips of your skis, point them directly down the mountain, race down the mountain. If you do, you break your neck. Or when you're hiking a mountain, you don't charge. I'm looking at a beautiful picture of Mount Everest here to the other side of me. I'm a hardcore hiker. We don't just charge directly up Mount Everest or we end up dying. So a zigzag principle is the sequencing and the ordering of putting together some zigs and zags in business that help you get to success. It's giving you permission and entitlement not to race directly to the goal, but to zigzag around the big obstacles to get to your goal. Okay, and I understand that one of the ideas in the book is that you're teaching people that failure is okay, and you teach people how to fail efficiently, and uh, you have a three-step process. Can you kind of go through that? You bet. Uh, indeed, uh, you know, I've now founded or co-founded 33 businesses. Uh, all of them started with $5,000, 11 have been ugly failures, and 13 have went on to become multi-million dollar businesses. Pretty cool odds. Everyone always wants to talk to me about the, uh, about the successes, but they so quickly uh, gloss over the, the failures. And I'm a real strong believer that failure is part of the equation. The trick, however, is, is learning to fail efficiently. So zigzagging, and particularly the guard, well, I'm sure we'll talk about this in a few minutes, but putting guardrails in place that teach you to fail, if you're going to fail, fail very efficiently, it's just part of the equation. I mean, how do you do, I'm, a, I'm an old guy, but I'm not that old. How do you do 33 businesses uh, uh, and, and, and still stay sane? Arguably, I'm not sane, but how do you do that? And the, the answer is, is you fail efficiently. So I'm a big, big believer in getting your failures over and done quickly rather than taking one year, five years, ten years, doing something stupid that you never should have been doing in the first place. And that's how most people define entrepreneurship. I don't. I just get my failures out of my system very quickly. So it's not about taking risks. It's about sort of preventing them from happening by figuring out what to do with them beforehand? 
Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, there's really three major components in the zigzag principle, and then each have a subset. The first part is what we call firm foundations. It's building a stable platform that you can actually uh, base a long-term business on. Now, I build a lot of my businesses without planning the firm foundation, and typically those businesses are opportunistic in nature, and they'll come and go quickly. So there's four elements of the firm foundation. Then there's the zigging and the zagging. The zigging and the zagging are, are the sexy part. It's the fun part. Uh, I'll just go through that really quickly. Zig number one, you drive to profitability. Zig number two, you add processes and resources. Zag number three, you add scale. So that's the zigging and zagging component. And then the third uh, component is what we call the guidance systems. The guidance systems are putting the guardrails on so as you're zigging and zagging, you don't end up you know, crashing through a barrier. We used the example earlier of skiing. And uh, indeed, I think we. All, I hope everyone's nodding their head with me. Everyone nod your head in agreement with me that it's <laughs> that is not a good idea to point your skis directly down a, a black diamond slope and zoom to the top, the bottom. But it's equally as dangerous to zig off into the trees and bang your head into a tree and break your neck. That's equally as dangerous. So you need guardrails in place to turn your zigs and your zags so you don't end up diverting into the weeds. Um, I can understand that you need guardrails when you're skiing, but can you give us a physical example of in business how you can put guardrails up to protect yourself? Absolutely. I'd love to do that. Uh, when I create a business, I say, okay, I'm giving myself $5,000 to run at this. If I can't do it in $5,000, if I can't do it in three months, if I can't do it with this relationship capital, in other words, I'm not going to take every business I run and take it to my entire network and in one evening or one three-month period, blow up every relationship I have on a business that may or may not work. So I actually bound and put guardrails about the relationships that I'll bring into it. I put a time resource. I'll spend 65% of my time working on that effort. I'll put $5,000 towards it and I'll put three months. And then I charge at it like no tomorrow. I charge at it with everything I'm worth all in. Balls to the walls, all in. I charge towards it. And you know what? If I get there, woohoo, victory, I won. Great. I hit the first zig and focus on the next zag. But if I don't, I say, oh man, that really stumped. I wipe the burden, the pain off of me. I go back and I mope for a couple, three, four days. I catch my breath and throw another $5,000, you know, at it. That's guardrails. I just outlined four or five. And you can put whatever guardrails you need in place. But the concept is, is you predetermine how much time, how much money, what resources, intellectual capital, relationship capital, financial capital, all the, the resources you'll put to it. And then you charge like a bat out of hell towards that goal saying, I can afford to risk that. That's so contrary to what most people think entrepreneurs should do.